praise and thank God for this time since it's a Bible study anyone has any questions feel free because we are here to learn from the word so you have any questions you can ask we were looking at the text if you look at the time you ought to be teachers is it true? Yes. That's what the Bible says. And that's something really serious. Really serious. Problem today with majority of believers are we don't want to be teachers. We just want to be fed by the milk. We just want milk. But the scripture says it's high time that we start eating Solid food. Solid food is not for everyone. So you have any questions? Come, you can come and sit in the front. We just started, so this is question time. We are looking at the text is Hebrew chapter 5, verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, he had need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Now become such as have need of milk and not of solid food. So, any questions? Youngsters? Feel free to ask questions. I'm giving you a little time. Yes, we were looking at what church is, how the church Grants or how ministers are appointed by God. And so can you define a teacher? Who is a teacher? Teacher is not someone who just stands up and preaches. Teacher is someone who basically teaches the congregation or every member. It's not congregation, one by one. What is he supposed to teach? Who God is. And why we need to know God? Because God is someone who is not going to change. What does that mean? He is a God of principles. He has his nature. And he's not like man who will do some adjustments. No. No way. I'll have to change. He'll not change. 66 books. He has given us in a language we can understand so that we can understand how he dealt with Abraham. He is going to deal with us the same way. Don't expect him to be soft or hard. Same way. If he's dealt with people in the age of conscience that way, will he be tough with us? Yes or no? Age of conscience is from uh, Adam, Adam driven out from the garden till the law was given. You see the different ages. In the Garden of Eden, it was the age of innocence. Man did not know what is good. He did not know what is evil. He knew what is good. He didn't know what is evil. But once he fell, driven out from the garden, that's when man is being led by his conscience. He doesn't have the Bible, no pastors, all that he is doing is they have no temple. You understand those things? No temple, no ministers, no Bible and Holy Spirit is not inside them. And they have to wait a long time to hear the voice of God. And God is just dealing with them through their 
conscience. And we all have a conscience inside, right? What does the conscience do? This conscience never speaks. What does conscience do? What does conscience do? I want you to tell me. You do something wrong, it will make you restless. That's all. It will never tell you what is right. But you do something that you are not supposed to do, you immediately become restless. That's all. The God be willing today, I'll take how God designed man. But then, look at Abraham. Or look at Noah. Look at Enoch. Look at Seth. Look at Abel. They were all men in the age of conscience. But then the age of the law came. When God gave them 631 laws. And when the law was given, where is God dwelling? He has the temple. And he is in the most holy place. And then, after the end of the law, we are in the age of which age? Grace. In the age of grace. So, but today what has happened, we have, we have misunderstood the meaning of grace. We think that in the age of grace, we can do anything and God will forgive. But that's not grace. What do you mean by grace? It is unmerited favor. favor. Unmerited. We think that in the age of law, he was hard and in the age of grace, he is soft. That's how we take it. But then how can God be hard to some and soft to some? Because, look at the privileges we have. Do we have a Bible? Compare ourselves with, uh, for example, let's look at Moses. He doesn't have a Bible, right? All that he has is the law. Is he the temple of living God? Is Moses the temple of living God? Where is God? In the temple. In the tower. And then, uh, before that, you see, Moses had to climb up the mountain, right? To talk to God. Do we have to go? No. And if you were in the age of law, can you come to church with some dollars in your pocket? <coughs> if you're in the age of law, what are you supposed to bring? No. What are you supposed to bring? Sacrifice. You can't bring sacrifice for everything. If you have done something unknowingly, you understand that? If you have done something knowingly, there is no sacrifice, you will be done to death. That is the law. You can only offer sacrifice if you have done something unknowingly. Now suppose if we are in the age of law and and we both had some arguments. And I punched you on your face. And you fell dead. I can't stand there and say sorry. I have to run for my life. And there are 48 cities of refuge. Where I have to run. So when I am running. Daniel because he is your relative. He will be chasing me. Because what is the law saying? Eye for eye. Tooth for tooth. And before, and if he catches me before I enter Fort St. John, suppose Fort St. John is the city of refuge. If I am just here in Rose Prairie, he catches me, he has to fulfill the law by killing me. You understand? The Old Testament law. What was the law saying? Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. I can stand there and say, sorry, I did not mean to kill him. This I can only run if I did not plan to kill him. This was just in a fit of rage, I punched him on his face and he's dead. But then, and once I reach Fort St. John, I have to live in Fort St. John till the high priest is dead. No matter how many years. But if I have killed him knowingly, I have planned to kill him. Even if I come to Fort St. John, he will call, kill me right inside the city. 
Because I killed him knowing. You understand the difference? Unknowingly and knowingly. If I have done something unknowingly, then only I can offer sacrifice. Unknowingly. But if I have done something knowingly, there is no sacrifice. That was the law. But now, we are in the age of grace. grace. Means the standard is far higher than that standard. For them, they had a temple. Where was God? In the temple. Where was He? In the most holy place. Where were you? You were outside. We couldn't come in. We were all outside. But now, where are we? <laughs> so is it more dangerous? More dangerous? So, we look at the different ages. How God dealt with them. That's why God gave them a long life. Abraham lived for how many years? 175. Adam lived for 930. Why? They don't have any of the privileges that we have. That's why they crossed 170. Now, when we have the Bible, we have church, we have members, we have ministers. How long should God give you? How many years should He give you? Seven. Huh? Seven. How many? Three score and ten. Seven. Seven years. See, for them He gave a long time because they did not have any of the privileges. Now once we get all the privileges, don't expect God to give you a long life. Is there a scripture that says that? Is there a scripture you're referring to? Simply you go to Genesis chapter 9, it says, man shall live for maximum how many? Yeah. 120 years. years. Who fixed it? God. You take that verse. Genesis chapter 9. Uh, chapter 6 verse 3 Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 Can you read that for me? Then the Lord said My spirit will not contend with man forever to be as mortal his days will be 120 years We tried a level best to expand man's life Are we able to cross 120? Why? Why? We have the latest technology at our disposal. Our food is also good. But we aren't able to live as long as our fathers lived. Why? They too have their sinners. Were they not? Adam lived for 9.30. How many candles on his cake? <laughs> How many generations he saw? And you and me? We are hardly able to see our grandkids. And that too, if we see, we are lucky. Why? God brought down the age. Why? I'm not going to give you a long time. No. It's I who will decide how long you live. Because I have created you with a purpose. You are not here forever. You are here for a short duration. That's why we need to be serious about our life. Has our day of departure been fixed? Yes. Uh -huh. Can you change it? No. And if we know the time of our departure, will you sleep tonight? <laughs> will you sleep tonight? Let's face the facts. Huh? <laughs> See, the problem, you know what? We just don't want the ministers to tell us the facts. Not only ministers, you look at the TV and everything. We like to live in a fantasy. What's Hollywood? Fantasy. What is Disney World? Fantasy. We love fantasy. For God's sake, don't tell me the facts. Because I don't like it. Just an example. Now, you have seen here houses, you know. From outside, if you look, 
it's all stone wall. <laughs> but you just go and touch it. Is it stone? Huh? No. Why? Why did you paste that picture of stone on your cardboard box? <laughs> I'm just telling you the fact. Is it true? We are inside a cardboard box. And how do we want to look at the box? It's a stone wall. Because you know what? Deep down within, I want fantasy. Don't tell me the truth. But you know, church is the place. And we as ministers, we are supposed to tell you the facts as it is. Why? So that you become serious concerning your life. You understand that? That's why people don't like ministers who tell the things as it is. Because outside in the outside world we face fantasy. Have you seen people uh, looking at cartoons? We like cartoons, right? What's there in the cartoon? Huh? Imagination. Cartoons. Have you seen cartoons? We like. And we laugh at that cartoon. We enjoy watching the cartoons. But is that reality? No. Why are you spending so much time watching at those cartoons? I am so tensed up. I just want to ease my tension by looking at some cartoons that someone has created. And we end up becoming cartoons. <laughs> I was in South Carolina, tell you a fact, in South Carolina, US, we had a Bible session and in the night around 10 o'clock, someone calls us up and one of, his, uh, one of the brothers, he says, my friend, he called me up, he's from Texas, what's the problem? He wants to commit suicide, so he's making the last phone call to his friend. So we said, man, okay, fine, you want to commit suicide, no problem, but give us one chance to come and talk. After that, you, you go and commit suicide, no problem. Because if he said don't, he will. So we said, okay, fine, we have no problem. You commit suicide. But just before that, you give us opportunity. We drove 30 miles. Lake City, from King Street, we drove in the night. 11 o'clock, that fellow is sitting near a pond. We went there and we found, he's a 25-year-old Texas guy. And we asked, what's the problem? You know why? My wife doesn't give me the remote of the TV. Wow. I said, man, <laughs> if you were somewhere in India, I would have literally thrashed you, man. Wife is not giving him the remote of the TV and he told me, I want to commit suicide. That's how the people are. Now a simple example, the youngsters, how long do the marriages last? Now, huh? what's the average? They just walk out. They just come with a suitcase already packed up. I'm ready to walk out anytime. But was, was it like that olden days? Why? We don't have the strength to face any crisis. Moment a crisis comes, what happens? Contensa. Why? Living in fantasy, you end up becoming a cartoon. You can't face life. Any challenge comes, you give up. Why? We become what you call accustomed. We become designed for a comfortable life. So what is church? Church is a place where we come face to face with reality. So that we step out of this place, not to live in a fantasy world, but we are the ones who have to tell the world what reality is. But now today we are living in a time when majority are after prosperity preaching. All that I can do is, you go on to TPN and all, you know the amount of money the ministers are making, TBN. 
They live in multi-million dollar homes. Whose money? Whose money? Believers? They gave it to God. And the ministers, they have planes of their own. Why do you need a plane? Why? A question. Can he sit on any other normal airliner and travel? Can he? Because your plane is not going to fly faster than those commercial planes. All that you need is a seat, right? But they have a fleet of planes. They have Mercedes. They have big, big million dollar homes. You know why? How they get that money? All that they have to do is bluff some people. And people are ready, waiting to be bluffed. All that I have to tell you is Brother Daniel or Brother, um, uh, what do you call it? Cosman, you want blessings? Yeah, who doesn't want blessings? Everyone wants. So I'll give you the trick how to be blessed. Sow your seed. Yeah, I never knew that. So how much should I sow? How much do you want? So sow a special seed so that you can get a Special harvest. special harvest. So by faith, I trick Brother Cosmin to sow special. special seed. So he is giving hundred dollars, expecting what? Thousand. Thousand. And they say, yeah, check. The scripture is there. Test God. So what happens? Slowly, slowly, we turn the church into a casino. <laughs> where people come to gamble with God. Is it true? And these people, they walk off with your money. And, and since they have that REV before their name, you know the advantage if I put REV before my name? I don't pay that much taxes. And you can get a REV by just paying $50. You can become a reverend. Just pay $50. You know, when I came to Canada for the first time, the embassy in Seattle, they told me, you're going for mission? You don't pay any fees. But I came to meet my uncle, so they said $60. This is a nation that's helping the ministry, right? When I say that I am a minister, what does the nation do? They are giving me some benefits. So the, the thing that I am telling you is simple. Don't be deceived. We have the... Can you go through it? Do as the word says. But today the devil has entered the church and what is the ploy of the enemy? Don't study the word. Now, these days, people don't have time to study the word. They just want to be carried away by emotions. You say anything, people are ready to believe it. I have seen people who have given their credit card details to the ministers. They had to close their account in the bank. They said that just, I was in Vancouver, you know, I went to a Indian brother's house. It's, it's what I faced. Now, there are bundles of envelopes. And he said, can you just take it off? He told me. I said, why? I said, throw it into the garbage. He said, no, I can't. I can't do it. I said, why? He said, open it up and see. I opened up the letters and you know, some scriptures from Deuteronomy, all mentioning about the promises, it's all written, printed. And then there is the sign of this palm. I have to keep my palm on that paper. But there is a trick. In that letter there is a glove, white colored glove. Plus, there is an olive oil also. So I have to wear that glove, apply that olive oil and put my hand on that blessing. But there is a writer at the bottom. Before you do that, send $400. And the date is mentioned. You say that. I saw it with my own eyes. He came to my house, he bought it. I am telling you my experience, not someone else's. But the date is mentioned. And I have to, and 
if this blessing has to click how much I have to send four hundred dollars and then there is a warning if you tear it this tear this envelope there is a curse waiting for you it's written there and this man you know he's not a believer he had a whole bunch of letters and he says please for God's sake can you take this off I carried the whole bunch in a packet and brought it home and my uncle was mad. He said, bro, where did you get this garbage? I said, what to do? Where do I throw it off? Then I opened up the other letters. There is water from Jordan. Who knows from which, which river it has come? Jordan water. And then there are some candles, small candles. And they, the letter says, you keep those candles, burn them, light them and keep it here. You have to keep it here so that God may enlighten your understanding. What happens if my hair is burned off? It's there in the letter. Out there can you see what people are doing in the name of Jesus. Why this is happening? You know why? Who allows this to happen? It is God who does that. You have to understand that. It is God who allows this to happen. Why? Can you turn with me to 2 Thessalonians? Chapter 2, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 9, 10, 11, and 12. The coming of the Lord's warning. See, I just want all of you to open your Bibles. And then you can read, yeah. Second Everyone, Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse nine. Or you can read from verse seven. Yeah, you can start. Yeah, you can start. Yeah, you can read. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12. Oh, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will leave, leave the lie, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Can you understand that? I'll read it for you. For, for, from 7 I'm reading. For the mystery of iniquity that already work, only he who now hindereth will continue to hinder until he be taken out of the way. Simple thing. You know, Paul wrote this way back. Not in 2014. In those days itself, who is working? The spirit of? And who is hindering? The Holy Spirit is hindering. Next. And then shall that wicked one be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders. Now for example, I have been, I am here as a minister. Right? I claim that I am a minister. Now it's so easy for people to be fooled. All that I have to do is perform some miracles. And brother Daniel, will you believe me that I am a minister? All that I have to do is what? Is it true? I have to just heal some sick. And that too in the name of Jesus. And I perform some miracles. Will people fill up this place? You tell me. Yes. The whole from Fort St. John people will be here. All that I have to do is perform some miracles. Why? Because we are not after the word. We are after what? Some signs. And we think that it is only God who does signs. You have to believe simple thing that Satan also performs miracles. Is it true? Has he done it? You know Moses, he threw the stick, rod. Did it become a serpent? Did, it, did the magicians of Pharaoh do it? Yes. 
How were they able to do it? That means Satan too has been given the power to perform miracles. Why? Who has given him the power? It's God who allows so that those who are purely after miracles should go after miracles. God only wants those who are eager to know him. You understand that? Today a whole lot of people are after their own blessings. They are not after God. They just want God to bless them, bless them, bless them. I am ready to do any worship if God is ready to bless me. And then it says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be. Can you understand the danger? Why is God allowing it? They don't want the truth. You want your desires to be fulfilled. And God is watching. And he will allow these. Next. And for this cause God shall send them what? Strong delusion. Who is sending that? God is sending a delusion that brother Daniel will believe. That this is the truth. Who is doing that? Why? You don't want the truth. You know that is danger? I am nurturing my own desires. And God says, yeah? You don't want me? You don't want me? You want my stuff, right? And what will he do? He will send people who will fulfill your desires. Because you are not interested to know God's desires. You know the danger? That's what the scripture says. You don't want the truth. You want some fantasy. And God says, fine, I'll send a strong delusion that you will get stuck in your fantasy. And then it says that they all might be, what, what, what does verse 12 say? Yeah. They all be judged, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, just a minute. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. Did everyone get it? Verse 4, it says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. What is this? Paul is mentioning to the church in Corinth there is another Jesus that we have not preached. Another spirit and then there is another gospel. All of this coming in the name of whom? Now how will you discern? The question was who are teachers? What are teachers supposed to do? Educate the members to know, to discern who God is. Because we are serving a God who does not change. change. That's why God has appointed teachers who come and teach you what? The word so that it's your precious one life precious life for example now both of you husband and wife are there right you have been married for how long 
32 years. 32 years. Is it not a privilege? But you have any idea when that will end? Who will go first? Is it not a blessing? You know, so many youngsters, the day they got married, they had an accident and the wife is gone. Has it happened? You know the one who wrote the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? You know his story? He was supposed to get married the next day. His bride was crossing the river. She drowned. You know the pain? Can you thank God for 32 years? Yeah. But don't expect this to be eternity. When you wake up in the morning, when I talk to my wife, even though I'm away, thank God I can hear her voice. But she can be history, right? I can be history. So why has God been so good for so long. That's where we get careless. We don't understand how precious life is. We take so many things for granted. So many things for granted. You know, have young kids died today? Yes or no? Yes. When small babies are dead, a simple question, why have you not gone till now? Should they be given a chance? Have we seen life? Yes or not? Yeah. God is not giving them a chance. But he has given me so many opportunities. The question is why? Am I good? Is it because I am good? No. Those innocent babies, in the womb itself they are gone. Why? God is teaching us Life is very serious. Just don't be comfortable thinking that I go to church. You know this book, even if I don't read it, this book will bring judgment. Forty dollars in a language that I can read? A small book? Why? When so many don't have a Bible in their language. Why has God given us so that I be very serious concerning my life? That's why teachers are there who will come and teach you not about you but about whom? God. We are up against a God who does not change. He is justice. Is it true? Yes. What does justice mean? What does justice mean? Judges you know that itself is enough to sh send shivers down our spine. We are in the presence of someone yes. who is justice. Thank God for the grace of God. That's the reason why we are studying the word of God. So that I can understand how precious life is. Now our sister Yonela, she is caring. Is brother and sister concerned about whether the child will have a kidney, lungs, bones? Are you praying for that? That God give them two kidneys? That's all, right? We are not praying, Lord give them, give my child 206 bones, right? Even if you don't believe in God, is He? Even if you don't believe in Him. That's what yesterday we read. Even though we are not, has He been faithful? The question is why? So that I understand, you know, when God talks to Moses, He tells him one simple thing. It is I who create the dumb, I create the... Have you read it? Can you turn with me to Exodus? Chapter 3? Chapter 4, verse 11. No, verse 10 and 11. Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 and 11.
Can any one of you read that? Exodus chapter 4. Yeah. Any one of you, can you read it? But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am, I am not eloquent, uh -huh. either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Can you just stop and analyze it? Is it God's word? What is God saying? Is it not I? <coughs> why? You know why He's created them? He's talking to us. I could have done the same with you. Can you thank God for the ears we are able to hear? Can we thank God for the they physically they are disabled, but spiritually, a soul and spirit is not disabled. So why I told you all these things? Simple thing. Why are teachers? So that we know who God is. Number two, how precious our life is. We are up against a God who does not change. This word is there in our language so that I know who he is because he is not going to do any adjustments. I have to change. But we want a God who will do what we tell him to do. Simple thing. I just want just a brief illustration. How many crossed the Red Sea? 600,000. That was just men, including the women? Around 3 million, that's what, approximately. Sure. Approximately 3 million cross the Red Sea. But out of the 3 million, how many cross River Jordan? Sure. Out of this 3 million. Can you stop and what does that mean? 3 million? And only two are crossing Jordan who have personally crossed the... Who killed them? <coughs> that same one is here in our midst. But we don't want uh, that kind of a God. We want a God who will be soft, who is all only love. No matter what I do, I, s I shed some crocodile tears, he should forgive me. No matter what I do. That's the reason. Holy communion, you know how dangerous it is? It's written in the word. Judge. It's not God going to judge. Judge yourself. It can bring sickness and it can bring what? Death also. That's how dangerous it is. That's why scripture says, can we turn to Hebrews chapter just a minute. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, chapter 10. Verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 26. I want all of you to open your Bible. So that we understand how precious salvation is. Here it says. For if we sin willfully. After we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant with which he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. 30. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. 31. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living 
See, we are afraid of Satan. But according to the scriptures, we are not supposed to be afraid of Satan at all. Who is dangerous than Satan? God. But you know how we feel? God is all love and Satan is the one who has to be feared. That's how we think. But the scripture clearly says, it say, huh? it's a fearful thing to who designed hell? Satan or God? Do we believe in hell? Is there a hell? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Who designed it? Who is throwing man into hell? Question is why? You designed man. And for how long? For how long? Can we just stop and meditate on a simple thing? Eternity in hell? Today we are living in a time when people say, please don't preach anything about sin. No, don't say that. Make us happy. Make us comfortable. But church is the place where you have to tell sin as sin. But today we ministers, what we do? We are more interested in numbers. It's better to offend God than to offend the people. That's what we think. <coughs> and what have we ended up with? Empty pews. We made the church empty because we decided it's better to offend God than to offend the people. I went to US, Canada itself. You know, churches are up for sale. Why? We decided, better off with God, keep the people happy. And to keep the people happy, you know all the tricks that we have to do? To keep the people happy. The best thing is, the safest thing is, let people be offended. He should not be offended. Because if he walks out, what's the use of this building then? If God walked out, can you look at Moses? Could he build a tabernacle? Could Moses design a tabernacle? Yes or no? Yes. He did his masters in the University of Egypt, right? He was mighty in words and? And he would have been the next Pharaoh. Is it true? Brilliant guy. That's what the Bible says. He refused to be called Pharaoh's daughter's son. He said it. Otherwise he would have been who? Joseph was number two. Moses was could have become number one. He's a brilliant guy. Number two. These men with whom he is walking through the wilderness. What were they making in, the, in Egypt? Can Moses and these three million make a beautiful temple for God? Yes or no? They have the knowledge. We, if we can break, build big places for Pharaoh to make a place for our God, we can do it. No, just, I'm just asking you a simple thing. We could do it the way we want. Moses is brilliant. The men also know how to make bricks. But what did God say? According to what I show. I don't want your knowledge. I know you are smart. Don't come before me with your smartness. That's the reason. One simple thing. Never ever dare help God. Never help God. Abraham and Sarah tried to help God. Whom did they get? Muslims. Is it true? <laughs> Ishmael, a wild ass. That's what the Bible pictures. He did not close the womb of Hagar. Neither did he open the womb of? Because you think, uh -huh, I am weak. You are strong. Go ahead. 
You know one who's a the altar on the bullock cart? <coughs> it's about to fall. What did our brother do? What did God do? You think, I, I need your help. Huh? I'm so weak. I've grown old. Centuries old. My hair is white. I too wear glasses like you too. I have a stick to walk. That's why I always understand God says, I am that. I am. He calls up Moses up and he says, man, this is how you're supposed to do it. And did God give details of everything? Yes, For the creation, only one chapter. One chapter explains how God created the whole universe. But for concerning the temple, how many chapters? Around 13 chapters. God is telling him the length, breadth, thickness, material, everything. And you go home, read Exodus 40. Seven times it's written. As the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. Why? If I do anything of my own, the temple will be beautiful, but what, but what will not be there? Today we have beautiful churches, but where is God? Where is God? We have buildings. The tragedy in the United States and Canada is God walked out of the buildings. Because this is something that you do according to your thinking. It's not according to my plan and my purpose. So what have we ended up with? We have the gym inside the church. We have the coffee shop inside the church. We have all the instruments, everything. Youngsters can do any nonsense in the church. Don't offend them. Better, it's better, don't offend the people. Let God be offended, we don't care. I went to a church in Vancouver. Man, you should see the stopwatch. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And the drum starts. Welcome Holy Spirit. Man, is this church or is this a spacecraft going up? We are so crazy, we are trying to welcome the Holy Spirit. Can you welcome Holy Spirit? He's already there with you. When did he leave you? If you welcome the Holy Spirit, I feel sorry for you. That means he left you in the night and thank God he has come back. You are lucky he came back. No, he never leaves. Is it true? He's there with you always. But we are so crazy. We are in a time we are welcoming home. And then we are so thankless. After the service, we don't say thank you, Holy Spirit. We just walk off. It's high time. We do everything according to the... If I have to hear God's voice, if I have to sense His presence, one simple condition. Are you ready to walk the way I want you to walk? Are you ready to pay the price and do what I tell you to do? I don't want your ideas. Don't try to be my counselor. <coughs> I'm God. Is it true? Amen. And if I decide to walk as he tells me, I will sense his presence always. That's what we need. But the key thing, why we have the church? Why we have the Bible? Life is that serious. How did God make man? We read that yesterday, right? Can we go to that scripture? Genesis 1.26 How is God deciding man? Can you read it? Can anyone read that? And God said, let's make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, 
over all the earth and on every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Simple thing. I am just brought this small thing. I got it from Walmart. Just to make you understand. This is me. I'm just giving you an example. God designed man out of dust. Dust. Can you turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 28 and look at how he designed the archangel. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 12 and 13. Ezekiel chapter 28. It's after Sam's, after Isaiah. After Isaiah. I want all of you to open before Daniel. 28 verse 12, 30. Did everyone get it? Yeah, can, can, can someone read? 28 verse 12 and 13. Some of men take up lamentation for the king of Tyre, Tyre and said to him, Thus says the Lord God. Thou? Yeah. You, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Mm -hmm. You were here in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your co covering. The Sardius, Sardius, Topaz, Topaz, and Diamond, Beryl, Beryl, Onyx, Jasper, Jasper, Sapphire, Sapphire, Turquoise, and Amber, mm -hmm. Gold. The worship, the workmanship, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Just, I just want to, you to compare how God designed man and how he is designing an archangel. There are three archangels mentioned in the Bible. One is Lucifer. That's only in the King James Version you have that name. Second is Michael. The third is Gabriel. Right? Three archangels. Lucifer was concerning the worship. Michael is the warrior. And Gabriel is the messenger. Now, the word of God explicitly is explaining how this archangel is designed. Scripture says, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. For example, now I want you to, now suppose Lucifer is standing here and man is standing here. You tell me, who is more beautiful, man or Lucifer? Who is more beautiful? Brother Daniel. Lucifer is standing and man is also standing. Outwardly, who is more beautiful? See, he is perfect in beauty, full of wisdom. So if we had a Miss Universe here today, who will win the trophy? Listen. Sure. He doesn't have to drill holes to hang something. Everything is built in. Is it true? Have you seen Sardis? Onyx? We don't know how much it costs. For us the most precious thing is what? Diamond, Diamond and emerald, right? We look at Lucifer, everything is inbuilt. He doesn't have to keep anything in the locker. No one can steal it. It's inbuilt. Number two, he doesn't need your piano. He doesn't need your drum set. Everything is inbuilt. That means he's a one-man orchestra. Right? Beautiful. So, how was man made? And the Bible says, was he naked? So here you see Lucifer, all glorious, and man, naked. Why the two? Like that. 
When you look at Lucifer, what are you looking at? Why has God made the two like that? When you look at Lucifer, whom are you looking at? Not at Lucifer. You are looking at the workmanship of God. You understand? You are not looking at God, but you are looking at what? What is God created? The perfection of God's handiwork. But when you look at Adam, you are not looking at the handiwork of God, you are looking at who? God himself. You understand the difference? Looking at Lucifer, you are looking at what? A handiwork of God. But when you look at Adam, you are looking at who? Can you see the difference? How precious we are in the eyes of God. But you know, we are so crazy, we are so tensed up. We worry as though there is no one. In the Garden of Eden, God makes man, and then you look at man in the, in the garden. Who created the animals? Who created the animals? Who is giving them names? How? God is making that animal and Adam looks at that and he says, yeah, that, 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 that's a horse. Man, how come you are able to give it a name? You didn't make it. Man, you know the wisdom of man? Forget, forget about these animals. When Eve was made, what was her brother doing? When Eve was being designed, what was he doing? When he woke up, what does he say? Wow. Who told you that? Who told you that that's bone of your bones? God told us. Is it written? You take, take oh, the bone. No, that's right. He said this is now. How do you know that this is bone of your bones? Man, that horse there, is it not your bones? No. That's a camel. That's not me. But this is me. Man, you were sleeping. Is it true? Why I'm telling you this, can you look at the wisdom of man before he fell? He and God think the same way. Is it true? And what was man doing in the garden? Singing songs? Was he worshipping? Was man worshipping before the fall? He was walking with God. Lucifer had to go up to worship. But man, he goes nowhere. <coughs> the one whom Lucifer worships comes down. Is it true? Yes. Lucifer has to go up to worship. But Adam is going nowhere. The creator comes down to talk to him. Why? This is my own image. I didn't create him to worship me. I want a relationship with him. But what we do? We don't want a relationship. We just want to thank him. You understand? We are so grateful to God. Lord, thank you, Lord. It's just like, just like a, a, a sister uh, Yonela or Brother Cosmo. I'm just telling an example. This time I came and I met them. I said, Brother Cosmo, thank you very much for the sandwich you gave me last March the 15th. Morning 11 o'clock. He said, what? I'm grateful. I still remember the sandwich you gave me. He forgot it. So next year again I come and I say, Brother, thank you for the sandwich you gave me in 2012. Will you like that? Huh? Will you like that? Thanking Brother Cosmin for the sandwich he gave years back. And I'm still grateful. You know, I am so grateful. What's wrong in saying that? Will you be happy? No. Why? Why are you not happy? Why? Well, I am grateful. Why are you not happy? It shows we're not in a relationship. 
That's the same with God. Thank you Lord for the house. Thank you for the job. I thank you for everything. You are real good. But I am not interested in a relationship. Are we not mocking at God? He is not giving us these things so that we can be grateful. He is giving us these things so that He wants you and me to be close to Him. You understand that? We are grateful. How? By coming close to Him. Not by saying thank you. If I am really grateful, I will not be interested in what He has given me. I will be interested in Him. Not in what He has given me. You understand? But what am I doing? What am I doing? Just thanking God. Yes, I am grateful. But how do I show my gratefulness? I want to know you more. <coughs> it's just like a uh, brother, he gives me a Royal Royce. He buys me a Royal Royce, right? And instead of saying, thank you, thank you, what am I supposed to do? Why on earth did this brother give me a Royal Royce? Why? I want to know him more. It's not the Royal Royce that attracts me, it attracts me to him. You understand? That's what happened with Abraham. He was not interested in blessings. He was interested in the one who blessed, blessed him. That's the reason it was easy for him to take the knife over his son. You understand that? So what is man doing? Walking with God, right? Both are talking. So the question is, who planted the tree? Two trees. Knowledge of good and evil and life. Who plants it? Now the question is, does God know man will eat? Yes, he does. Yes or no? Yes. So why are you planting the tree then? This is Bible class, right? Class one. When you know that, you know, because of the tree we have the cemetery. Yes? yes. It's of the tree, because of the tree we have Walmart, the beauty creams, the perfumes, the washing machine, and our brother Cosmin and sister Yonel are building a house because of the tree. Yes? Yes. If there was no tree, will we have the storm warning? You tell me. Did it rain before the flood? It was air conditioned everywhere. Adam didn't need a roof. Heaven was his roof. It's all because of the tree. So when God you know that because of the tree billions are going to hell, right? Brother Danny. So when you know that this tree will be the nuisance, forget about the pain we have to go through. You yourself will have to come down. Is it true? Creator walked as man because of the tree. Yes or no? Yes. If man had not fallen, is there a need for the Creator to walk as man? Can you just understand that? Because of the tree, he's hanging on the cross. So the question is, what's the fun in the tree then? Are you playing games with us? When you know that this is going to be the root of all the problems. Why are you planting that tree? And man, he's walking with you. What's the problem? You come every evening cool of the day and he has already been given dominion, right? Any problems? No problem. Everything is working fine. The creation is obeying man. Yes or no? Man is walking as God. Is it true? Yes. 
before the fall? So the question is, why the tree? And you know the pain? Is he wearing shirt and pants? He is covered with what? Glory. Glory. Walking with God. Talking with God. Creation, everything is in order. Question is why the tree? You know one simple thing. He created us with a big plan. What's the plan? What does he want you to be? Why did he create brother Daniel? Did he create us? He created my spirit. And now the question is, simple, you have to understand. Now, when he created this man, he gave him a body. But within this body there are two critical things. One is our soul and one is the spirit. It is not God's spirit. Whose spirit? Man's spirit. You have to understand that. The spirit inside us, I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about Adam. When he is there, the spirit inside Adam is whose spirit? Adam's spirit. But now you have, to, you have to understand, what is there in our body? We have five senses. Right? What are the five senses, youngsters? What are the five senses in our bodies? Sight, touch, smell. One is sight. Next is hearing. hearing, and then we smell, taste, touch, five senses. Where is it? In our body. But then there is a soul inside. From our parents we get our genetics. But we don't get our soul and spirit from whom? From the parents. The outward features are like our parents, but inside there is something else whom God has put. You know, so many couples, they don't have kids. Why? <coughs> it's God who has to give. We can't produce. We can produce airplanes, we can produce Rolls Royces, but we can't produce a child. It is God who has to give. Is it true? That's why abortion is murder. The true sense of the word. You understand? It's murder. It is God who gives. It's not our own produced. So what's there in our soul? Number one, we have the intellect. We can think, right? I look at you and I can understand many things. See, this man created this thing from dust. Camera from the dust. Airplane from the dust? Because what God gave what? Intellect. Number two, He has given us emotions. What is emotion? We cry. We get angry, right? Uh, David, when your dad gets angry, you know it? How do you know it? Without his shouting, do you know it? How? His face will say, better be careful. Thank God for emotions. If we didn't have emotion, what would we do? <laughs> How on earth will you know that he is happy or is he mad? Can you thank God for emotions? Number three, the most dangerous thing, you know, he has given us the free will. Who gave us? God. Now, David and Abigail and all are there with their parents. When dad says something, you are not supposed to, you get angry or not? Yes or no? Tell me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> this morning I saw that young guy, his dad was saying, go, throw it off. Eh? He didn't like it, right? You were the one. He didn't like it, he's just this much. His dad says don't. And we don't like it. What do we want? Can you leave me alone? Now they are there telling you what is right and wrong up to some time. But then a time will come, parents will not say anything. Is it true? Abigail, yes or no? Now dad and mom are there watching you. 
scolding you. Why? Do they hate you? Huh? They love you. That's the reason they tell you this. But then a day is going to come, they are not going to tell you anything. That guy is sitting there. They are not going to tell you anything. Then who has to decide? You have to decide. And then, you cannot blame anyone, right? God has given us the free will. Who has to decide? I have to decide. So that's the reason we will be judged. Why is there judgment for man? Because he has been given the free will. So what is there in our soul? Intellect, number two. Emotion, number three. Free will. Now there is a spirit inside us. What is there in our spirit? Number one, we have the conscience. What does conscience do? Huh? I cross the red light. Traffic light? The next time I see a police car, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he didn't see you. But the moment I see the police car, I'm saying, oh no, he's not going, he's not after me, no matter what, still you'll be looking at the rear mirror. <laughs> You're trying your level best to ignore it, but deep down within, <laughs> can you understand the conscience? What would life be if we did not have conscience? I'm staying with brother Daniel. I saw his, what do you call, a small cell phone. I liked it. I put it in my pocket. I'm on the plane back to Vancouver. Will I be able to sleep? Brother doesn't know that I have taken it. But who tells me? Not God, but who? Conscience. My conscience is saying, eh, that thing, ah, that thing. I'm saying, no, so what? He doesn't know it. I needed that phone. My conscience will say, no fooling around, man, that's not yours. That's not yours. Who put that? Even if you have not heard the name of Jesus, is there judgment? Yes. Is there judgment? Yes. Why? They, no one has to tell you what is right and wrong. You see our kids, when they tell a lie, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know it? How? How do you know a boy is telling a lie? There is a difference between boy and girl, right? How, does it, how do you know that the boy is saying a lie? They are smart. They try to hide. But you know there is a signal, our body language thing, right? A body gives off signals. A boy when he's saying a lie, he, his hands goes like this. <laughs> he thinks that he's saying the truth, but what is he doing? He's doing like this. And a girl, unknowingly her hand comes here. Why is your hand coming like this? Ah, I'm telling the truth, but, but what's happening? A body is tuned like that. By whom? If we can design a camera like this, can you know how he designed this? That's conscience inside. Number two, you know our phone, does anyone have a phone? Can anyone give me a phone? A cell phone, yeah. Just to make you understand. This is a phone, right? How is it able to get the signals? Any wires connected? There is a SIM inside, right? This is a phone because there is a SIM. You remove the SIM. SIM. Will it work? Will it work? What did I do? Remove the SIM. And now I have taken the SIM and I am keeping it in me here. Will I be able to hear? <laughs> huh? I removed the sim. I said, man, I don't need this. Can you just give me the sim? That's enough. Will it work? It's because of the sim. You know what? My wife is in India. I can call her now. No cables needed. 
because there is a powerful thing called the sin because of the sin i can receive and send same way you know when god this is created by whom man god has put a sin inside our spirit and that's called intuition 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 that's what we call the sixth sense or the gut feeling the real thing is what is it intuition we are hearing three kinds of voices number 1 we hear god's voice number 2 we hear satan's voice number 3 is my own you understand there are three kinds of voices that we always hear one is god number 2 satan number 3 it's our own these voices are spiritual voices that's why i don't need a ear to hear i can know deep within this ear is for my physical ear but in my spirit god has put that ability that i can hear whose voice god's voice now when i speak to brother daniel his wife knows that i'm talking to daniel but this intuition in my spirit no one will know that there is someone talking to me that's inbuilt that's called intuition but you know what as a child of god you know now this phone is there brother daniel called me on the phone this is the first time he's calling me i say who and he says i am daniel i say yeah and after the phone what will i do after the call what will i do that i will save that number is it right so the next time brother daniel calls do i have to say who is calling what does my phone say that's daniel calling i can decide whether to accept it or not what is the phone saying now you have the phone also which on, even if you don't look at it it will say daniel calling daniel calling right we created it same way why we have to study the word you have to save how many books 66 if you save 66 books you know what happens when god talks you know it's god talking if you don't study the word you'll have no clue who is talking many have been deceived thinking it was god talking because you know satan knows the scripture better than us is it true or not yes he came to jesus quoting what did he come he comes to us not with two horns and a tail see how come the churches in america have been destroyed satan entered the church not through believers satan entered through the pulpit believers were not careful they messed up their life they thought that it was god speaking but it was a big deception it was the enemy speaking we never checked it you know in the first century if you read acts chapter 16 i'm just closing Now, when the apostles were preaching, what were the members doing? Checking. Is it true? Did they have a Bible? Yeah. No. Did they have the Bible? No. I'm asking about the first century church. Did they have a Bible? No. They didn't have a Bible. Then, what are they searching? They are looking at the Old Testament, looking for a shadow. So always understand. when and even if i am coming and teaching or anyone how on earth will you know that i am been sent by god or sent by satan <coughs> all that i have to wear is white shirt a black pant and say i am reverend so and so and i have a beautiful visiting card what will you say you are great man of god today we have great men and today we also have that title called great servant of god Since when did servants started becoming great? Are servants great? 
prophet we, we call great servants of God. And you know we have a crazy title reverend. What do you mean by reverend? What do you mean by reverend? If you are reverend, you know, if I am reverend, you know what? My passport should not have the date of birth. Why? I am eternal. Number two, my face should not change. I should not grow old. I am unchangeable. Number three, I don't need you all to cook food for me. I do everything on my own. Omnipotent. Number four, without you telling me everything, I should tell you everything. What's that? Omniscient. Number five, now when our brother Cosmin is going home, I should be there in his car with him. When brother Daniel is going home, I should be in the same car with him. So I should be in both the cars at the same time. And when you go home, I should be there in your car also. What does that mean? So if I am reverend, how many qualities? I am ready to call you reverend if you have all these five. There is only one reverend. Who is he? Rest all our dust. Is it true? There is only one who is worthy of all reverence. We all are just dust in his hands. So I'm about to close. Now God plants that tree in the garden. Why? I did not make you a toy. I gave you everything. And you have dominion also. I want you to show, prove, can you be trusted? What is the tree telling? Can you be trusted? <coughs> there was nothing in the tree. God be willing, tomorrow I'll take that. There was nothing in the tree. What was the tree telling man? You have seen the skull and bones. What does that mean? Huh? Poison or danger. What was this tree telling man? Danger. What's the danger? I have not created you as a toy. Uh, you are the God of this creation. Be careful when you walk. Was man the God of this creation? Absolutely. Was creation looking at man as his God? Yes. Who gave him the, then the names? It was this man. But you know, he did not make anything. It was God who interested him everything, right? So what is the tree telling him? Be careful, be responsible. But how are we sitting here? What man used his free will not to be responsible. When I did not take my responsibility seriously, what happened? Can you see the consequences? God has entrusted all of us serious responsibilities. But when I am not serious about it, the scripture says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. What you sow, you shall reap. Why? You are not taking that responsibility seriously. Now we are going to pray. One simple thing. Can we thank God? For creating us. How did he create us? In his own? As you step out of this place. I just want you to understand. Life is very serious. It's not the time for us to fool around. Take life seriously. There is someone who created us. And he will hold us accountable. That's why the lake of fire. Now I live as I want and I am dead 
you all carry me and put me in a basket, in a casket and put me in the ditch. I turn back to dust. But when he sits on the throne, will I be back? Now you know that plane disappeared. 239 passengers. You heard of it, right? Yeah. On the white throne judgment, will all the 239 be there? Yeah. How? We couldn't find them. <laughs> we couldn't find them. The whole world tried its level best. Around 10, 20 satellites. So many planes, we have no clue. You don't find them now? No problem, you'll find them one day. The whole lot will be there. Where will we go? That's why life is very serious. Thank God we are alive. Any moment, we are gone. Lord, help me to be serious. That's all. Help me to be serious. Look at all that He has given in our life. Not because we are good. He wants us to be responsible. responsible. He gave man everything, not because he was good. He wanted him to be responsible. That's what he wants from us. That's the reason he gave us a body, soul, spirit. And he will hold us accountable. Can we close our eyes and go ahead? Thank you, Lord. As we step out of this place tonight, let's go back from this place with that assurance. Life is very serious. When so many people don't have anything, He has given us more than what we want. Not because we are good, He wants us to be responsible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The one who dwelt in the temple with Israel is dwelling with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Father, we praise you and thank you for this time, Lord. Hallelujah. As we step out of this place, Master, we just want to know you more. We don't have words to express our gratitude. Many times we have just been thanking you and never been serious about our relationship. We don't know how many hours are left in our life. So many are dead and gone, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. Help us to be careful in our walk. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.